yeah now we can able to see our footage uh, like uh, I didn't find any interesting of course uh, uh, there is a light uh, the lens distortion according to this our uh, the model is like uh, stays fine the only thing is the footage has smooth blur uh, the shutter issue that we can able to fix even the, the model itself in the passes will define vector pass um, so we can able to get the same result of course so once this is done I have to take this footage uh, either uh, Photoshop or uh, Nathan or Nuke I have to clean up that footage of course uh, the existing object I have to erase so uh, then only I can keep the statue over here um, so you can able to see actually I can't able to hide the the overall the object behind the original I have to uh, replace um, also I have to do a little rot on this the foot area which is like uh, uh, the overlapping between these pillars of course um, so that we can able to fix it later classes actually uh, so once this is done I'm going to stop here uh, using my uh, right geo again uh, so make sure that uh, whenever you export your data uh, to any 3d application so your point cloud is very important this point cloud has become a locator in uh, Maya of course the, uh, so I'm going to take the data right now so match more kind of geo something so I'm going to open this if I say like I need a geometry of course so I'm going to say execute so my input is uh, 0 to 162 of course I'm going to say ok now good to go right now so we have fixed all the issues here the drifting uh, the tracking I have deleted then I solved then we have fine um, undistorted the footage uh, so we have the choice also here like uh, after the multipass compositing so either you can bring it here your read node with all the shuffling passes we can composite directly to the length distortion node so for example if you are going to take uh, the undistorted image into uh, any other application then we can all we can also take uh, another output uh, with the lens distortion of course okay so now we'll see once this is done also we'll export our lens distortion data into a different format okay um, so now as far as right now the new job is over so once the match move data is done then we can go for a maya setup even i'll show you the maya setup uh, each and every element uh, how to set up a uh, render passes of course um, so we'll wait for a while and uh, yeah it's about to complete right now okay 82 percent on so make sure that your uh, tracking point is on uh, because this each and every the box the pixels what you're looking at right now this boxes comes as a locator okay um, so you have to be very careful with this make sure that everything is on so make sure that also create your right node after the C node okay so not the scanline editor so scanline editor basically the process all the 3d content into a 2d comp so now why, what I'm going to do, so I'm going to uh, use a right node. So I'm going to connect this into my, uh, so the lens distorted node. So from here I'm going to connect. So I'm going to say like, uh, I'm going to save this file uh, back once again. Back uh, from the, the source images. So I'm going to create uh, uh, and distort. so from here uh, so undistort uh, percentage 0 3 d dot ti double f tiff i am going to take uh, tiff as output so make sure that when you take this filing to premiere or maya better to have a not a d flag lgw because uh, maya uh, won't support your d flat uh, sometime so even premiere of course lcw is a very safest uh, 
compression uh, so Maya will allow also the premiere so once this is done uh, nothing else uh, so make sure that you see your tip where it is saving um, so of course uh, what you want like RGB or RGBA also we can choose it here but right now I have only the image so let it be RGB uh, so all this thing is fine put a render I'm going to say same 162 just okay okay once this thing is over then we'll take this uh, file into a Maya 